the carrot leading the donkey send in dopamine. We are screwed. Now, when I say we're screwed, I don't mean failure is inevitable. That's not what I'm saying. But if we take into account what we learned in the last chapter regarding leptin and insulin, these are two hormones that are at the very center of fat metabolism. And if we don't have control over what's going on here, if these hormones are dysfunctional, then we're gonna have a difficult time controlling the amount of fat that we lose. And when we combine it with what we're gonna learn in this chapter, with basically the voice in your head that says, just one more, just, just cut yourself a little sliver of cake, that's it, it's gonna feel so good, just, just eat it. When you combine it with that, we're gonna have a very difficult time losing fat tissue. So get your notebooks out, start taking notes, let's get to it. Okay, so what is dopamine? Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that mediates pleasure in the brain. It is released during what someone believes to be pleasurable experiences and situations. It serves as the key motivator and stimulates one to seek out those pleasurable activities. So basically it's case by case. What is pleasurable to one person might not be very pleasurable to another person. Also, when you find that one thing that brings you this pleasure, your brain is gonna remember it because it says, that's pretty valuable. And it's pretty nutrient dense. It's got a whole lot of fat and a whole lot of sugar and you like it? I'm gonna remember what that was so that way when the time comes and I need some energy, I'm gonna make you go out and look for it. So this is what dopamine is gonna look like for our purposes, this is the pathway, and these are the dots that represent the actual dopamine neurotransmitter. So what is the hedonic pathway? The hedonic pathway is where primal emotions, reproductive drive, and the survival instinct are housed. So already, it sounds a lot like a part of the brain that you don't necessarily have too much control over, that it's innate, it's part of our genetics, it's what we were meant to do. So let's take a look and break down what exactly it is. So we have the VTA, which stands for the ventral tegmental area, and we have the NA, which stands for the nucleus accumbens. The VTA is responsible for regulating the amount of dopamine that's gonna be sent to the NA. So it basically dictates how much dopamine you're gonna be using. It's gonna send that dopamine over to the NA, and the NA is basically where it is experienced, where the pleasure is actually taking place. Now, a big part of the NA is something called the D2 receptors. This is very important, okay? What these D2 receptors do is they actually receive the dopamine from the VTA. They are actually a part of the NA that receives it, and without them, the NA won't be able to receive it and you wouldn't be able to feel pleasure. So the D2 receptors are very, very important. So let's take a look at a functional hedonic pathway, one that works the right way. So we have the VTA and we have the NA. The VTA is where dopamine is regulated and the NA is where dopamine is used. The VTA has its dopamine gonna get ready to send it over to the D2 receptors which receive the dopamine for the NA. The NA is going to take up that dopamine and the feeling of reward is going to take place. Now as long as the dopamine is in the NA you are gonna continue to feel that pleasure, you're gonna continue to feel that reward and so you're gonna keep eating. So basically when you stop eating that feeling of pleasure goes away which means that that dopamine has been cleared from the NA. So the dopamine is cleared from the NA and the feeling of reward is extinguished. This is how the hedonic pathway works in regards to food. So let's look at a hedonic pathway that's dysfunctional. So we have our VTA and our NA just like we had them before. And we have our dopamine that's getting ready to be sent over. We have our D2 receptors that is going to be ready to receive that dopamine so that way you can experience pleasure and you can get that reward. Now, take a look at those D2 receptors. They seem to be a lot smaller than the previous example, the functional example. So take a look at that. Here's the previous functional example of the D2 receptors. 
and here is the current one, the dysfunctional. It's half the size. So let's just say the two examples send over the same amount of dopamine. If the D2 receptors are blunted, that means they're not going to be able to take up as much dopamine as if they were functional. So let's take a look at that. So we have our D2 receptors that are blunted due to overuse. DTA is going to send over the dopamine. However, that dopamine, in order to get the same reward or the reward that you're seeking, you're gonna need more dopamine, okay? So more dopamine required to get the same reward. This takes in the form of eating more food. In order for you to get the same reward that you've always gotten, but your D2 receptors are blunted due to overuse, you're gonna to have to eat more food in order to get the same amount of pleasure. So if you're trying to get the same amount of pleasure, but it takes eating more food to do it, you're gonna be eating more calories, you're gonna be eating more carbohydrates and more macronutrients altogether, which of course will aid in weight gain. So the dopamine's gonna be sent over to the NA, the feeling of reward is going to be experienced, and there you go. But the problem is, is that we had to eat more food to get the same reward. If you're wondering how to combat this problem, the D2 receptors can actually be regenerated. The way that you do this is that you look for the trigger that's causing the pleasure, right? And you kind of hold back from those triggers, ensuring that the sensitivity of the D2 receptors will regenerate over time. This is a more complex discussion that has to do more with addiction that is beyond the scope of what we're gonna be talking about. So let's look at another example of the hedonic pathway that's dysfunctional. So we've got the VTA and we've got the NA. We've got our dopamine that has been regulated and now we have our D2 receptors in the NA getting ready to receive it. And as you can see, it's even smaller than the previous example. So what happens? Dopamine is gonna be sent over, okay, but it occurs to us that obviously the D2 receptors are smaller, so in order for us to get the same reward, we're gonna to have to send over more dopamine than even the previous example. So even more dopamine required to get the same reward. In order to get more of this dopamine so that we get the same reward, we're gonna to have to eat even more food than the previous example. So in order for you to get the same feeling of reward, the same feeling of pleasure over and over again, if your D2 receptors are blunted, you're gonna to have to eat more and more food, okay? The NA is filling up with that dopamine, the feeling of reward occurs, and in order for it to go away, the NA has to clear that feeling of reward, clearing the dopamine. So let's take a look at an example of the hedonic pathway and its relationship to leptin and insulin, all right? Now, believe it or not, the VTA has a relationship with leptin and the NA has a relationship with insulin. Now, let's go through it together. So, leptin is gonna send a signal to the VTA. Now, we talked about how the VTA, it regulates dopamine. And how it regulates dopamine, it must first be sent a signal from leptin. So if you're feeling satisfied, full, and have lots of energy, then you're not gonna necessarily need a motivator like dopamine to be sent to the NA so that way you keep eating or you search for the food that you need. There's no reason for it. If leptin is telling your brain, I'm, I'm full, I've got plenty of energy here, and I'm ready to go, I've got lots of energy, dopamine is not required as much, and so it regulates the VTA. The VTA is then gonna send the dopamine over to the D2 receptors in the NA. The NA is gonna take that up, you're gonna have that feeling of pleasure, and then this is where insulin comes in. Insulin is then going to send a signal to the NA, and what it does is it clears the dopamine from the NA, extinguishing reward. Reward is cleared, all is well. So let's take a look at an example of the hedonic pathway when you're leptin and insulin resistant. So here we have leptin, okay? If we're leptin resistant, meaning that we might be full, we might have the energy that we need, but the brain is not getting that message, okay? Then that means that we don't necessarily need to eat, but we are anyway. 
because we're not getting the leptin signal, just like we discussed in the last chapter. But it also affects the brain, because if you should be getting a signal to the VTA sending, look, you don't need to eat. There doesn't need to be a motivator for you to eat more, so please stop. But it can't get that message because leptin is resistant. No signal is going to be sent. The amount of dopamine will remain the same. It will remain high, motivating you to eat more, even though you're full and you have plenty of energy and you should have leptin. That signal is sent over. That dopamine is sent over to the D2 receptors. The NA fills up with more dopamine than necessary, more of a motivator than necessary. And if you're insulin resistant, okay, then no signal is going to be sent to the NA to clear out to the NA, which means that feeling of reward is gonna go on way too long. Uncontrolled dopamine in the VTA, uncleared dopamine in the NA, compulsive overeating. So this is the basic case where you've had a meal and it's clear you're full, you don't need any more food, you don't necessarily want any more food, and then all of a sudden the dessert cart passes your table, you get a glance at it, and you're like, damn, I want that cookie, but I'm packed, I'm full, I don't, I don't think I can eat anymore, but I'm gonna eat it because I want to, because it looks delicious. I'm gonna put that in my face, that's it. That's exactly what's happening here. When you're leptin and insulin resistant, okay, the dopamine is not going to be cleared and it's not going to be regulated, which means that you're gonna go on eating for a longer period of time and longer than necessary, even though you already have fat stores that you could be using for energy. This is all how it works. So what do we take away from this chapter? If we put it all together, we understand that dopamine is a very strong force and voice in your mind that is compelling you to consume the very foods that you find most palatable. Not only that, they are directly connected to both leptin and insulin. And if you're leptin and insulin resistant, insulin being the very root of it all, meaning that you might be consuming a high amount of carbohydrates and refined carbohydrates if you are resistant, this means that if you're eating carbohydrates on a large scale, they're only making you hungrier. Okay, not hungrier necessarily out of necessity, but out of palatability, out of what tastes delicious, and that pathway to feeling that pleasure. So it's very important for us to decrease our percent carbohydrates, decrease our refined carbohydrates, so that way we can get to that pathway of ketosis. This is very exciting stuff. We're on our way. See you in the next chapter. What's up everybody? So in the past sections, we learned about leptin, insulin, and dopamine, how they are interconnected, and how they work together to essentially regulate our metabolism. They decide whether you're going to conserve or expend energy. Now in these past sections, you might have gotten the message that carbohydrates, having them in high amounts, are not going to be advantageous to your goals, and that's right. This next section is crucial. Okay, this section is going to talk about how high blood fats, how high cholesterol, high triglycerides actually happens because essentially we're going to have to beef up our fat numbers. And our society today, it basically says having large amounts of fat is bad. It causes heart disease. It causes cancer, colon cancer. So it's really important that we understand that this is false. So let's go through it together. See you there.